Maine has always contributed to the arts. The state is home to a number of recognized artists, singers, and actors. Today we will travel to Biddeford to hear the fascinating history and tragic story housed at a local theater. Episode 15, City Theater, Biddeford, Maine. Settled back in the 1600s, Biddeford is Maine's sixth largest city. Situated next to the Saco River, Biddeford became famous for its textile industry. Sending its goods far and wide, it was a major commercial hub. Today, we will focus on a cultural center found in the downtown area. Let's find our seats at the City Theater. Hello, welcome back to Stranger, Maine. Today, I come to you from Biddeford, Maine, in just the gorgeous Biddeford City Theater. I was given special permission to come down here and film an episode, and I am very grateful to have the opportunity to be here. So let me tell you about this place. The theater was constructed in 1896. It was actually a replacement for a previous theater that had burned down a few years prior. It's decorated in a way to make it give the feel of the previous theater. The artwork, the uh, paintings are all kind of giving that vibe, of that late 1800s theater, which you'll get to see in a little while when I talk about the ghost story portion of this. I'll walk around a bit so you can see it. The theaters are really important places. Now remember, pre-television, pre-radio, pre-movies, outside of books, theaters were a place you could get some entertainment. You might go there to see live music. You might come to watch a play. You might see even a vaudeville show, which is a sort of a variety show that could have traveled from place to place. And big names came here to this theater. You had Charlie Chaplin, who was a huge star you know, pre-talking movies. You had people like Fred Astaire, who was a well-known dancer, performed here. And his personal connection, one of my dad's favorites, Laurel and Hardy, a great comedy duo from back in the early 1940s era, formed here, which I didn't know until I started researching this, and I was so excited to find that out. But here's the thing about theaters that people don't get. Plays, despite the fact they are entertainment, are also a really important cultural piece of our society. It's how we get to know other people, perspectives, and cultures. We may not understand how someone else thinks, but we can get to know them through characters put here on the stage. Hundreds of performers have brought those characters to life, giving people a glimpse into lives they wouldn't understand or know. They get to hear music from places they've never been, and maybe you didn't have the chance to travel far away to experience those things. They were brought here for you to enjoy. Music is one of those great things, especially in the live performance, where you really connect with the performer. Listening on the radio or, you know, your phone is a great experience as well. It was just something about seeing someone live in person doing the thing that you really enjoy builds that connection and helps you understand. That particular character that you really resonated with may speak to you in a way that reading them on the page doesn't because the performers bring them to life. So let's talk a little bit more about the theater's history. So I'll tell you some more about that right now. So as I mentioned, this theater replaced the Opera House. And during that time, lots of different acts were here. But unfortunately, times change. Technology, as it expanded, started to dig away a little bit at the theater. Now what technology am I referring to? Well, films. Initially, films, black and white films, old ones, didn't have soundtracks. Um, you had to come to see it, and someone, or a group of someone, had to either play music or provide something to go along with it. There wasn't a, a second reel, there was no audio with it. So that produced a different experience, because you could see the images on screen, but the music and effects were given live in theater. And that, of course, is a whole art form unto itself. Uh, folks like Charlie Chaplin became very popular during that media. But as, of course, you know, over time, that changed. Movies started to come with their own music, with their own dialogue, with their own sound, already attached. So you no longer needed the live person in theater to do so. Which brought people in. This place was actually fitted with a movie screen so they could show those silent films and some of those films that don't uh, require the live audio. Then television came along. At first it was expensive and not too many people had it, but as it got smaller and cheaper, more people had it, it kind of dripped away at the audience because they could stay home and watch something. They didn't need to come out to the theater to do so. In the 1950s and 1960s, drive-in theaters became very popular, where you could just drive to a big old field where there was a giant screen, you could turn your radio on to hear the music, and you could enjoy from the comfort of your car watching whatever film happened to catch your imagination at the time. Unfortunately, in 1963, the theater ended up closing its doors. It couldn't keep up uh, the maintenance and they couldn't keep up the building with the number of ticket sales because it had decreased so much. And this place became essentially a storage house, which 
again, if you, if you get to visit here, you understand the level of tragedy that is. This space was used for anything besides entertainment. But in the 1970s, they found a, a group came in and decided to breathe some new life into the theater. They brought back the shows. They brought back the excitement. They cleaned this place back up and restored it to the glory it deserves. So all in all, it's a really neat place. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, you've talked a lot about the history. The, what about the ghost story? Is this place haunted? Well, I can't say that for sure. I'm not an expert in the subject. But there are some stories, specifically some stories around a performer named Eva Gray. And now I'm going to tell you about it. The haunting of the theater starts on Halloween night, 1904. Eva Gray performed that evening, sharing her gift of song. She was there with her young daughter, and after her performance, she was called back for not one, not two, but three encores. She decided to end with the song, Goodbye Little Girl Goodbye. Shortly afterwards, she returned to her dressing room and collapsed. A heart attack ended her life. She was only 33 years old at the time. Since then, people have thought that her spirit stayed behind in the theater. Patrons and staff have reported seeing shadows moving around the darkened space. Reports have also been made of hearing a woman's voice singing. People have also claimed to see stage lights being moved about during practices. The lights in the dressing rooms will flick on and off. There have been some paranormal investigations, with purported audio clips of mysterious voices and pictures of a white shadow at the staircase. Might Eva Gray still be haunting this theater? It would make sense that she'd want to stay in a place where she made so many people happy. So now that you've heard the story of Eva Gray and I've told you a bit about the history of the Brooklyn City Theater, you might be wondering, so what do you think? Is the spirit of that former singer here? And for that, I, I don't have a good answer. I've experienced nothing paranormal while I've been here, but I am very grateful for the opportunity to be here in this space. It's not often that places like this allow people to come in and film something like this. So I am extraordinarily grateful for the opportunity. So I'm hoping you've enjoyed this so far. Here's the thing. Biddeford City Theater, still open and in business. If you can, check out their website. They've got productions going all the time. You can come down and catch a live show or one of the other events they have, and you can see this theater for yourself. It's an amazing space. If, however, you're not able to get this far, see if you have a local live theater. Live performances are very much different than those you see either on your TV or on the internet. YouTube's great, but it's got nothing on a live performance that you can see. I'm sitting right here in the front row, and I'm barely a stone throw away from where the performers would be either singing or doing their acts. There's something different and magical about a live performance, and if you can, I highly encourage you to try it out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.